NBA プレーオフファーストラウンドペーサーズとセルティックスのゲーム前半を終了しました河内俊光さんの解説ですそれでは前半をハイライトで振り返りますまずペーサーズが立ち上がりいい形を作りましたそうですねインサイドでですね本当にいい形で得点取りましたねこれはディフェンスからです今度は外からミラーです3ポイントそしてセルティックスはうちのポイントですがなかなか今日はうちをつけなかったですねそうですね、えー、やっとですよこれ苦しいシュートですよね、はいさあそしてオニールさらにはデイビスとバランスも良かったですねバランスがいいですねペーサーズは、はいまあ、前半を終わってですね、はい、後半に向けてどんなところがポイントになるでしょうかそうですね、はい、あのペーサーズのですねディフェンスからなおかつですねエースのミラーのスリーポイントここでですねもう一気に前半はペースが変わりましたね今このプレーなんですけどね、今ここでミラーがスリーポイントを入れるんですけども、はい、ここで前半のですねスタート時点なんですけども、まずパスでですね、えー、セルティックスの方が45度にパスをして、ですねここのプレーヤーにノーマークなんですね、でここにもまたパスをさばいたんですけども、ミラーがですねこのボールに対してティップするんですね、ここでティップしましたね。でこのボールをですねもうすかさずですねテンズリーがですねボールを取ってドリブルでこういうふうに進んでいくときにです、ね、ここにジャミー・オニールがいますねでここにですねミラーが走ってるんですけどもオニールがここで止まらないんですねでこのディフェンスを引き連れてここをこうボールサイドこうカットしていきますねでカットした後ここ完全のうまくなってますねで初めにインサイドで攻めてましたので次のですねこのミラーのスリーポイントこれによってですねボストンがインサイドもアウトサイドもですねあのもう注意しなきゃいけなくなってしまった完全にこれペースアウトペースに入りましたね立ち上がりで流れをつかんだシーンそうですね,ですねピアスは一ファウルでもプレゼントパール・ピアスは一つのシャツです。ボストチームは今、オーバーリミット。Well, that's the one thing you don't want to do if you're the Pacers. You want to play good, solid defense and try not to foul to continue to perhaps frustrate this Celtics team that hasn't been able to get out and run. Turnovers have been a huge problem. And the Pacers have pounded them inside. Well, after game number one, it looked like the Pacers have been down for the count as it appeared to the Boston fans here. Coming in for game five, but these fans well acquainted with a team that was supposed to be out. Red Sox last year against the Yankees, trailing three games to nothing, being beaten 19 to 8. Speaking of blowouts in that third game, and you know the rest of the story. And if you don't, all you have to do is come to Boston because somebody would be happy to tell you about it. Indy by 13. Jack Knight jumper, and Reggie Miller fading away. Three of four for Reggie. Again, it's O'Neal on the mismatch against West outside. And Foster, a hard foul on Paul Pierce. Well, I tell you what, you're better off there just challenging him and not fouling to see if he can make a tough shot. Instead of sending him to the line, he gets two free throws. Plus, he gets a chance to score with the clock stop. I mean, Jeff had a chance just to run by and see if he could make a. Ball was going in there looking just to get fired. I mean, it's much harder to do that when you're on the court as opposed to sitting here watching it like I am. Well, but Pierce, uh, Pierce succeeded, but that is part of uh, his ball game where he can uh, put the points on the board from the foul line, 82% shooter, plus to get opponents, particularly the guy who's guarding him, in foul trouble and out of there. He's 10 of 12. Tonight. But I think you're better served if you're the Pacers. Make him make a tough shot as opposed to scoring at the line because that helps the team trying to come back when you can score with the clock stop. Pacers have been in control so far as the tempo continues to shift in this series. 
But still 15 minutes to go in this one. Anthony Johnson looking back Rick Carlisle making the call still 13 seconds on the shot clock they wanted to get uh, Reggie isolated against the uh, rookie West with the three fouls he backs up and now Peyton ahead it goes to Pierce double team swing it that's his corner and there it is Delonte West hits a three and Rick Carlisle calls a timeout. The rookie out of St. Joe's. Calm, even killed, and can make his shots. He had 14 points in 12 minutes in game four. A timeout. Which team will be the first club facing elimination Thursday in Indiana? Larry Bird has seen his ball club. Battle back from one blowout here at the Fleet Center Court, number 33. Enjoying so far the first three quarters, along with Donnie Walsh, seeing if his team can duplicate that and return from another blowout here in Boston. Critical juncture here, Al. A little momentum. Fans trying to get back into it. Pacers need to be poised and finish this quarter strong. Jones is trapped and loses it. So Fred Jones stepping out of bounds. Marcus Banks now in to help provide the pressure along with Delonte West and Al Jefferson also. Only starters now, Paul Pierce. Ricky Davis, who is a starter tonight for the second straight game. Well, this is really hurting the Pacers, Al. Pierce is six of six from the line. Ricky Davis about to go to the line now. Chipping away at that lead with the clock part. Jeff Foster called for his third personal foul. Ricky Davis coming over from Cleveland with Chris Mim. Eric Williams, Tony Batty. All new WB Tuesday coming up after the game. Gilmore Girls followed by one Tree Hill. That's tonight on Indiana's WB4. And that was the trade Clark that uh, was Jimmy O'Brien to leave Boston. He wanted to stay with the half court tempo, defensive mode, veteran lineup. Davis. And he deflects that off of James Jones. Back to back turnovers. And uh, it's time to get Jamal Tinsley back in. Rick Carlisle, exactly what he's doing. He takes James Jones out. Handling of the basketball. Well, with this unit on the floor for Boston, Banks, West, and Davis, they can really pressure you. So everybody's got to be alert. And help out in handling the ball. Here stops and pops. And the Celtics getting themselves right back in it. An eight to nothing run. Johnson handling the ball with Tinsley on the floor. And the crowd back in it. Doc Rivers all over the official for not uh, making a call on Jeff Foster. Oh, Foster, two seconds on the shot clock, is left with that. And all of a sudden, the tempo has changed. Davis for three. And that would have brought the house down. So the Pacers hold on to the basketball in the seven-point lead. Got to get it to J.O. here. Got to find an opportunity inside for Jermaine O'Neal. There are two men on Jermaine O'Neal, who gets pushed out there by Jefferson. The whistle blows. It's against Boston. And Jefferson has his first foul, but the rookie Jefferson not in awe of Jermaine O'Neal. Go ahead, Jermaine. And there was no foul called on that one. Wow, wow, wow. Well, he's figuring Jermaine's only a few years older than me anyway. <laughs> 
one of those other high school to the pros guys, although Jermaine's been around for eight years. Pacers, the last two games, have hit 60 foul shots. Tonight, 12 of 15, while the Celtics are 19 of 24. One more for O'Neal. With 16 points and nine boards tonight. Rick Carlisle takes out Jeff Foster with the three fouls and goes smaller with James Jones right back in there. So patience with both Joneses, O'Neal, Tinsley, and Johnson. Seventy to sixty-two, Indiana. Celtics scored 110 points in Game Four. 62 right now as we head closer to the fourth quarter. Quick whistle there on it's on Fred Jones. And this is part of the comeback. Clark, as you mentioned, it clock continues to stop. Pacers continue to put Celtics on the line. Well, that was a tough call against Fred Jones. I thought he did a nice job beating Paul Pierce to the spot. But you go back to some other fouls in the quarter out when the Pacers, I thought, were in a position to challenge without fouling. And those are the ones that come back to haunt you. And when he gets this kind of volume at the foul line, it's hard to beat the Celtics. So it also allows them to set up their pressure defense. He's attempted 14 free throws and only six field goals. Celtics squeezed to within six after trailing by as many as 15. The crowd standing, looking for the defensive stop, and O'Neal is called for either the travel or the foul. It's a turnover on O'Neal. Well, he didn't catch it cleanly, and as a result, his feet weren't quite together. So he was off balance. And now the Celtics are going to play through Pierce. Open up the floor and see if Pierce can get something for himself or a teammate. O'Neill goes out. Foster is back in. Pierce watching the clock. Second and a half differential. Pierce makes the move. Picked up by Foster. Davis versus Tinsley. He glides in. And he is fouled. No basket. They had one second left. And Davis will now have a couple of foul shots. Well, again, the floor spread. Tinsley just kind of got his feet frozen there. And then reached in and committed the foul. But that's where the Celtics have done it at the line, although Davis has missed a couple here in this quarter. Celtics were 8 of 12 from the foul line at the half. They're now 21 of 27. 13 of 15. 15 from the line. Pacers should have time to try to get a shot here. Two point nine. Jones to Jones. He gets it off in time. But that ends the third quarter comeback of the Boston Celtics. Paul Pierce and Ricky Davis combining for 36 points. And no. Dale Davis has had a big game tonight. James Jones out there. But the Pacers will start this quarter on defense so I'll have some time but James Jones and Doc Rivers going with his bench here the young guys and Ricky Davis used to playing with one another Ricky Davis trying to carry Boston he's there high man with Pierce each with 19 and that run now extends to 13 to 1 the Pacers had led 69 to 54 Tinsley handling it now with the intense pressure from Marcus Banks. James Jones is our guy, Al. The steal by Davis. One-on-one -on -one with Jones. 
Tinsley is in on it, and they'll jump it up. Well, Ricky Davis injured that back earlier, but he seems to be okay, just upset with himself. But a telegraphed cross-court pass by Tinsley never saw Davis. He was blocked by the Celtic defender that was on him and never saw Ricky Davis. And with this unit on the floor, most of the offense will go through Ricky Davis and perhaps Delonte West, but Ricky Davis will have it in his hands an awful lot. So Davis at the six seven four inch height advantage and he takes advantage. Second year man out of UNLV Marcus Banks who has been very valuable off the bench with his defensive pressure also has been hitting his shots. Bolt of lightning as he takes it in and loses. Well undecided as to what he wanted to do there. That is his that has been the yeah. big dilemma with the banks looking to make the transition to the NBA. He is uh, all over Tinsley. Tinsley though beats him and comes up short. Well you don't you, you can't afford to go too much longer with this lineup on the floor if you're Rick Carlisle. Trying to buy some time. Three men on Jefferson. Well, he had the right notion. Delonte West was open. But Doc Rivers, who has given plenty of time to his young players, he's been living with their mistakes, hoping that by this time, playoff time, they would have gained their maturity. And uh, for the most part, they certainly have. Yeah. That's the only way they can gain it. You've got to roll with the punches and realize that you're going to have some speed bumps along the way. And every now and then, you're going to have crash. But it'll serve you well long term. Shot clock now down to five. James Jones sandwiched there by both Banks and West. And Banks has foul number two. Well, James Jones doing a nice job on the poor closeout by West using that escape dribble to get in a little closer. He'll have a chance to put the Pacers on the board here. In the meantime, Paul Pierce has re-entered the game. And Steven Jackson will do the same for the Pacers. Well, James, an excellent foul shooter, 86% during the regular season, has missed two. And Jamal Tinsley is coming out, replaced by Jackson. So now it'll be the uh, backcourt of Johnson and Jones who will try to deal with the energy and pressure of Banks and West. Another miss by James Jones from the line. Very uncharacteristic of the Pacers mature second year man. Tough match up here Jackson with the four fouls. And then Johnson giving up size to Ricky Davis. Two seconds to shoot. And as soon as Davis was in the air, he was unaware of the clock. Once he was in the air, he was, it was over. Well, that's what can happen with Ricky. He can certainly keep you in it, but he'll he'll go brain neutral on you sometimes in terms of recognizing situations. You're being kind. That's my nature. And Jackson draws the foul. And this is on. On Ricky Davis. So Jackson trying to get to back into the flow. Jermaine O'Neal for Dale Davis. Jackson has scored 20 in three of the four games. He's looking to get to double figures with these two foul shots. Pacers have been stuck on 70 for quite some time. Yeah. Entered the fourth quarter at 70. Game six. One team will be facing elimination Thursday at Conseco Fieldhouse. 
And there still are some tickets available. Well, this is the pace the Pacers are comfortable with. They won game two at this pace. So they don't have any trouble trying to grind it out. Davis fakes the three and way off the mark, but it turns into an assist to Al Jefferson. Well, Jermaine O'Neal was out of the play because he was on the floor. And that left the big youngster free inside. O'Neal battling with Jefferson. And the Pacers are very fortunate to uh, get that uh, back. And they'll talk it over. Seven seconds for Indiana to shoot. Eight and a half to go in this fourth quarter. And the Celtics back in business. Reggie Miller is back on with eight and a half to go. He has only taken five shots, but he's hit three of those. And Paul Pierce starts out. He's now teamed with Peyton. Ricky Davis gets a rest. Banks, West, and Jefferson remain on the floor. Pace is still looking for the first field goal in the fourth, so the middle light fourth quarter shootout is on. Well, neither team wanting to find the basket here. Celtics have attempted three shots. The Pacers only two so far in this quarter. O'Neal, one on one against Jefferson. Two seconds to shoot. Johnson in a hurry. Swish. Anthony Johnson beats the clock with a three, and that's his first field goal tonight. Well, give Jermaine an awful lot of credit. He turned and faced, saw where the defenders were, and then found A.J. in the corner. That's a big shot after the Pacers had been in a bit of a drought here recently. Jefferson from behind. O'Neal gets him. Now, who's the Pacer you pick? Oh, it was, it, it, Reggie was on the floor, so that negated. Who but I had James back. Jones. That was Lowell Kymarkle's original pick, right. Reggie Miller. Uh, we can't override the original pick yeah. out. We're looking for winners. <laughs> <laughs> you can never do that. That's, a, that's rule number one. What's that? You can't override no, no, you the can't original because no, no, that was right. the pick. Right. right. Exactly. Pacers trying to. Get a cushion, but an offensive foul against Indiana. Well, I think Jermaine sometimes gets too caught up in trying to bang those guys. You get open with your lower body. You use whatever leverage the defender is trying to use against you to your advantage, and you don't want to get into a mud slinging wrestling match there. Five minutes into the fourth, Ricky Davis back on the floor with Ray LaFrance. We have not seen much of Antoine Walker. In the second half, as that's dribbled out of bounds off of the Celtics. But now the officials are conferring. Right through the legs of Johnson, they're going to change the call. As Monty McCutcheon saying it deflected off of a pacer foot. Reggie Miller pointing to the uh, shot clock. The officials once again regroup. Group. But Boston will have the basketball. That would have been their 20th turnover of the game. Moves continue to be made. LaFrance and Walker now in for Boston. Dell Davis on the floor for Indiana. Pacers back to their Starting five of the first four games. Walker, the hard drive. And a wild floater. Antoine Walker gets back into the flow. Long seat for Walker. Suspended the last game. 
Quick shot by Reggie Miller. Seventy five seventy one Pacers holding on to the lead. Payton plenty of time and that one's ripped down by Steven Jackson. That's not Gary Payton's game. If you're the Pacers you don't mind seeing him casting up open threes. He might make one or two but more times than not he's more effective in closer. Jackson releases swish. It has been some time Steven Jackson's first field goal since the first half. He has only taken four shots and he's made three of them. LaFrance, oh no, says O'Neal. And Boston will have the ball. So the Pacers, just as the Celtics, huffing and puffing and trying to knock the door down, coming up with some big plays. Third block for O'Neal, big basket by Jackson. Timeout. 552 left. Jermaine O'Neal. Still one rebound from a, his second double double of the series. Jackson almost gets it, but Pierce has some room. Peyton all alone. Beautiful play by Paul Pierce, but the gamble by Stephen Jackson created a driving lane for Pierce, and then the Pacers just didn't rotate. Now you got to make sure you get high quality shots every trip. Pacers to play good defense without fouling. No team fouls. But we've got one there. The third team foul now on the Celtics. And it is on Pierce. So Pierce has his third personal foul. And the Pacers will inbound. Pierce tonight with 19. Coming off his 30 point effort to carry the Celtics in game four. O'Neal. Davis unable to go right up with it. And loses it. Boy, J.O. appeared to have gotten fouled. The friends able to recover. Walker, hard move on O'Neal. And another floater by Antoine Walker. Well, game four for Walker was the best game he never played as the Celtics bounce back in. And after that shot, Indiana calls a timeout. Five minutes left. It's a two-point game in Boston. Celtics get Antoine Walker back in this game tonight. Doc Rivers uh, going with uh, Walker in the bigger lineup for a good portion of the game, finding themselves trailing by double figures. Walker a long seat in the third quarter, but here in the fourth, looking to make his mark on this ball game. Back to back Walker on the drive and hitting that uh, patented floater. This team did not start to win until Walker returned to Boston via Atlanta. They would go 18 and 9 with him in the lineup. They were one game under 500 when he rejoined the team late February. Jamal Tinsley is back in. Hasn't played in two and a half months. Thrust into this end of the game situation. He sets up Reggie Miller, and Reggie delivers with a crucial three pointer. Pacers now widen the lead to five points. Miller, 10 points tonight. He's only taken seven shots, and he's hit a couple of threes. Pierce with the fake, and he comes right back with a three. And the lead again, sliced to two. Gail Davis is going to be called for an offensive foul as he decks Paul Pierce. Pacer strongman looking to go up. But instead, taking Pierce out. Yeah, he got him with the left arm. Had it extended away from his body. 17th turnover for Indiana, 19 for Boston. Aggressive is Steven Jackson. But Boston will have the ball. Pacers led by 15. With three and a half minutes left in the third quarter, 
Biggest lead for Boston, and it's been rare, has been two. Pacers have led virtually all the way. Celtics led at four to two in the early going. Play is stopped, bodies all over. Looks like it's going to stay right there. Jermaine O'Neal finds out that he has just been assessed his third personal foul. Only the first on the uh, Pacers. Look at that shot Ricky Davis gave to Reggie Miller. Officials are not picking that up, but uh, Jermaine O'Neal taking Davis out. Celtics arguing that Ricky Davis should be shooting dead ball foul, but it wasn't. The ball was actually thrown in. Jackson again gambling on Pierce. Hard drive, short. Boy, Jackson very aggressive defensively and able to do so without committing the foul. The Pacers still with only one team foul. And now Tinsley guarded by Peyton with Davis switching to Miller. Jermaine O'Neal, swish. Huge shot by O'Neal, 19 points. And the Pacers hold on. Celtics had their chance to tie it. Pacers now by the four, 320 and counting. Davis shadowed this time by Jackson with Reggie Miller guarding Pierce. Pierce, a man of many moves. At the buzzer, he beats the 24 second clock. That's just terrific one on one play. 24 for Pierce. Pace is going for this high pick and roll action. Seven seconds. Three seconds to shoot. Jackson, a desperation heave, and he rattles the rim from three point land. Steven Jackson answers back, and he beats the clock for three. Oh, it's knocked out of Walker's hand. Tinsley nods in agreement with the official. Tinsley is third foul. Tough, tough shot here against the shot clock, but the little hesitation ball fake froze Walker and gave Jackson just enough space. Jackson has that Jackson. shot. Yeah. <laughs> that many people think, what do you take? Nice shot. Four for five from the floor. Pierce back to the foul line again, and it's number four on Tinsley. So Paul Pierce going to uh, force it against Indiana. Check that number five on Tinsley. And Pierce, who has already taken 14 shots from the foul line, he's hit five field goals. 12 of 14 from the line. He knew he missed that one as soon as it left his fingertips. Pacers Chevy calendar. Rest of the series. Tickets available Thursday. They'll meet for game number six. Who will be facing elimination? And then game seven, if necessary, back here in Boston on Saturday. Well, JT has the five fouls. He's got to be smart. At the defensive end, Pacers would love to have him quarterbacking the last two minutes of this game. Quick release by Miller. He thought he had it. It was right there, but short. Pierce stolen by Tinsley, who is fouled as he takes it away. Another steal by Tinsley. His fifth of the ball game. He is so good at recognizing when he can leave his guy. And that time timed it perfectly. See Pierce with the wraparound dribble, never saw him. Tinsley had him locked in the whole time. So Pierce has his fourth foul. That's the fourth uh, steal for Tinsley. Reggie Miller also has four. Jackson, another quick release from deep. Leads to a fast break. Davis. They can't foul. A minute and a half left in game number five. 
Gary Payton getting impatient, wants him to clear out for Pierce. Tinsley trying to help. Pierce, no. Pierce and the tip. Reggie Miller cannot get it. So much more. As uh, Reggie gets lost into the crowd, doing everything he could to save that uh, ball and get the possession for Indiana. And getting tangled up there and finally helped out. So the Indiana Pacers nursing this four point lead down to 116 doing everything they can. And delivering the Celtics the major win in game four to tie this series but the Pacers bouncing back from that devastation. You just saw Paul Pierce mouthing to himself come on so you know they've called his number. And he wants to make a bucket or a play that leads to a bucket. Pacers with uh, those timeouts a foul to give Boston nothing across the board there. No timeouts for the Celtics. And Pierce has the ball the switch. LaFrance the fake. And his shot partially deflected by Dale Davis as we come down to the final minute the ball in the hands of Tinsley. So Davis makes the big defensive play. Well he's had a large ball game tonight Dale Davis has. Tinsley eluding Peyton. Reggie Miller steps in. There's the Reggie runner. Oh the friends knocking Jermaine O'Neal out of the way. Got to get back. Celtics. With Davis cross court Walker he takes a three. And Dell Davis on top of another rebound. His eighth of the game down to 34.8 seconds. And the foul immediately as the Celtics now have to be very concerned about the clock. Ricky Davis the foul his third but it will send Dell Davis to the foul line a 62 percent foul shooter. But he has made all three tonight. Davis a block and a rebound here down the stretch Pacers maintaining that four point lead. They've had opportunities to stretch it a little bit. Celtics have had the opportunities to tie it. And both teams now a chance to talk about it. Well D square. Taking up the space there for a little pull up jumper strong finish there inside working that glass right there. This was a huge bucket because the Pacers had stalled one of many times they had stalled in this second half and Dale was able to get that rebound and throw it down a big defensive play a moment ago. So D squared bringing a tremendous effort here tonight. Well Rick Carlisle coming into this fifth game able to bring back the words he said after game one about his team when the Pacers were blown away lose trailing by as many as 37 in the first game finally losing it by 20 saying after all this team has been through this year they cannot be demoralized Correct. they will not go quietly they have just been through too much and Dale Davis now the significant foul shots as he takes his time. That one never had a chance. Rick Carlisle making some moves as Davis thinks about the second shot. Anthony Johnson replacing Jermaine O'Neal. Well, Rick Carlisle wants to be able to match up with the smaller lineup here for the Celtics, knowing that if Dale makes this, they may look for a three, even if he doesn't make it. And they get the rebound they might look for a quick three so Rick Carlisle just wanting to have better defensive matchups on the floor. Big free throw here. Push it to five. Got it. Davis 13 points eight rebounds five point lead. And Banks races it across the Celtics have missed five of the last six shots. Banks oh and he's fouled. No I think it was a I think it was a goaltend out. That's the call. Yeah, I think it was a goaltend on Dale. The crowd anticipating the, the foul. Erupting. 
And the uh, quick hit there by Peyton. The Celtics are just using the clock. It's all they can do at this point. That was the first uh, field goal of the game for Marcus Banks, and he really did it in a hurry. Yeah, he did. Well, he can do it in a hurry. <laughs> I mean, he's Bolt just, of lightning. Yeah, he's as quick as a hiccup. And that time with the floor spread just went right to the rim. Well, it becomes a foul shooting contest now for the Pacers. As a matter of fact, a couple of free throws and maybe one good stop. Perhaps two good stops and knocking down free throws may do it. Anthony Johnson was a hero in the Pacers win in game two here making two big field goals in the last couple of minutes Pacers winning that one in crunch time and here we are again. Eighty seven eighty three and Jermaine O'Neal will replace Dale Davis. Well, if, I think, if this were Conseco Fieldhouse, Dale would be hearing it. Yeah, he right sure now. would be. But I would think the Pacers might even, if he knocks his foul shot down, it would make sense to put a little token pressure on. Don't let the Celtics just walk, run up into their offense to get a quick look. Put a little pressure on. You've got a foul to give. You don't want to give it, but certainly don't allow them to come up easily. Clutch foul shots by Anthony Johnson. He has one field goal, but four four from the line. Banks, Pierce. With Jackson glued on him, takes the three, and it's Tinsley who pokes it away. But it's loose again. Oh, O'Neal threw it away. And Banks can't hold on. And after all of that, Indiana gets the ball back. And Rick Fowler <laughs> right now, just looking in the air, cannot believe what he just saw. Well, he likes the scoreboard that he's looking at. Oh. And Rick going to call a timeout yeah. right now to regroup and regather. Well, both coaches need a aspirin after that timeout. He probably should have just held on to yeah. the ball. But if the Pacers hold on, Jermaine can laugh it off, of course, if his shoulder didn't uh, feel it. Well, he seems to be okay. I don't think. Uh, Nine seconds, you know, the diagram in that timeout. The Pacers to get the ball into the hands of uh, Reggie Miller. 88 83 Pacers getting the ball game in the 80s exactly where they want it. Reggie triple team and it takes a couple of seconds off. And now uh, Reggie looking to uh, put in the final daggers against the Boston Celtics. Very hard to explain most of this season. And I guess it is only fitting to have a playoff series like this. The Indiana Pacers, unless the Celtics find some kind of a miracle, will go home for game six on Thursday with a chance to eliminate the Celtics on their home floor and move on to the second round. Reggie Miller quietly impacting this ball game with his uh, shooting touch hitting a couple of uh, threes he's in double figures now with 11 points these are his only foul shots of the game and he comes through with the two so it is now a three possession game with time running out they'll let Pierce take it in 90 to 85 and the Celtics know where they stand as they allow the Pacers to dribble out the clock. The Indiana Pacers have done it again. ゲームを通してということになりますが、やはりリバウンドを互角に戦ったんですね、ペイサーズは。そうですね。本当にペイントエリアで今日は頑張りましたよね。そして第4クォーターも結局はイーブンの20対20というスコアで第4クォーターもしのぎました。これでセルティックスは後がなくなったという形で敵地インディアナでのゲームを第6戦迎えます。それでは個人スタッツをご覧いただきます。ペイサー
さあそれではイースタンカンファレンスのプレーオフですが今日ペーサーズが勝ってこれで王手をかけたという形になりましたそれではプレーオフファーストラウンドこれまでの戦いを振り返りたいと思いますまずイースタンですこれで今日の両チームの対戦相手はピストンズということになりました、はい、の優勝チームです。さあそしてブルーズ・ウィザーズもこれ実力的にはほぼ互角<笑>本当に分かりませんね、えーはいまあ、ブルーズはあの若手の選手がね、はい、今シーズンこう伸びてきましたから本当に面白いチームになりました、ね、イースタンカンファレンスのプレーオフ、まあ、今日終わった段階での結果をご覧いただいていますさあそれでは今度はウエスタンですウエスタンはすでにサンズがセミファイナル進出を決めていますがここもそうですねソニックスとそしてスパーズがやや有利という形でシリーズを進めていましたさあそれではプレーオフ今度はウエスタンカンファレンスのハイライト得意のアップテンポなオフェンスで第4クォーターには11点差をつけますロケッツはマグレイディそしてこの日30ポイントと好調の陽明を中心に点差を2点まで縮めます終了3秒前のマグレイディリバウンドからシュートを狙いますがこれが外れてロケッツは連勝の後3連敗と崖っぷちに追い込まれましたシーズン7シーズンぶりとなるファーストラウンド突破に王手をかけたソニックスチームの大黒柱レイ・アレンはこの試合30ポイントの活躍を。これでウエスタンカンファレンスではサンズそしてソニックスと決まりましたあとはどうでしょうかやはりスパーズでしょうかね,うねスパーズは、えー、多分来るでしょう、はい、でもロケッツマーベリックスここはまだわかんないですよ、えー、<笑> NBA のファイナル制覇までは長い長い道のりということになりますでも本当にソニックスはいいチームになりましたね、はい、またこの後はカンファレンスセミファイナルそしてカンファレンスファイナルさらに NBA ファイナルと続いていきますプレーオフですこの後の